Hey guys, we are back with more San Jose Sharks franchise mode, and last time we got to the NHL entry draft, we simmed the entire year number four, well the rest of the year number four, and uh, we are in a good draft spot, we're picking fifth, or we're supposed to pick fifth, and the reason I say that is because I was talking about moving up once again, I don't think we're going to move up to four, th uh, to, to number one this time, because that uh, would be way too much value. <laughs> I actually, uh, yeah, that just, uh, and it wouldn't be really realistic to get three first round, first overall picks in a row, would it? Actually, uh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> anyway, we're going to try to move up to get that pl center playmaker in Darren McLeod, I think his name was, because he looks studly and he is. Pretty much ready to go uh, year number one to play basically on the third line, if not maybe even second line, because, man, that is a... If, if he's got a 90 offensive awareness, if that's accurate, then jeez. <laughs> he's going to be great. And he's, he's a righty. He's, he's only age 17 and as well, and he's six foot three, so he's got the body. He's got the skill. I think we need this guy in, uh, in Darren McLeod. So, uh, as I said, I'm going to let the number one overall team, I think it was Washington, pick first. But I do want to try to see if we can move up to number two to Las Vegas. So, sim pick. All right, so good. They took, uh, uh, that is the weirdest name I've ever seen. So, got, uh, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> uh, we'll just call him Cole. 82 overall, sniper, 18 years of age. Not bad. Not a bad player right there, but we've already got a sniper. We are going to try to trade to Vegas, their second overall pick. They don't want to give it up. But what I have planned to give back, they'll probably be interested. So here's where we unload Charles Cardwell because we're going to be getting someone who is already NHL ready in... In Darren McLeod, instead of having to wait several years for Charles Caldwell, because I was doing my uh, uh, offline Devils GM mode, and I got a center playmaker with elite potential who was in the low, mid-50s, somewhere around there. It took him till he was 24 to make the NHL, and not only just to make the NHL, just to make the fourth line. <laughs> so we're going to be trading away Cardwell. We're also going to be trading away, obviously, our first to move up to second, now, that looks pretty good. I want to see if I can add one more pick in there. Maybe a fourth would do it. Uh, yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good to me. Because, I, again, I don't... I know I said I would want to wait for Cardwell, but if a good opportunity uh, presented itself to trade Cardwell, this is that opportunity right now. And whatever guy they get with the fifth overall pick, I don't really care. Um, because we're just moving up to the second overall pick to get the player that we we want. You know, so proposed trade, rejected, sweeten the value, just a touch. Okay, so we're very close. Uh, how about a fifth? Will that go through? Perfect. <laughs> okay, we got the second overall pick, and I know exactly who we're going to be choosing. It's going to be Darren McLeod, and let's hope he's a good one. Welcome to the team. Yes! 82 overall, medium elite, 17 years of age, 88 offensive away. <laughs> this guy's already great. He's going to be on the power play year one. <laughs> He's not bad defensively either. 75 faceoffs, 85 defensive winners. He's p Hold on a minute. He had the... Wait a minute. Isn't that the defensive category that Kirk Koleakimo had when we drafted him? <laughs> like shot blocking and everything? I think it was. <laughs> That's kind of scary. And then uh, 85 is all around for shot. 88 pretty much all around for puck skills. Yeah, this guy's going to be good. Year number one. <laughs> so that is a that was a very good trade that we made right there. Let's see who Nashville takes. They're going to take Hicketts, an elite sniper. 81 overall, so he's going to play his first year as well. And then uh, Rio Pell, Minnesota takes Rio Pell. And then let's, let's see who Vegas takes with our old pick. That's going to be Dahlman. The medium elite sniper, 79 overall. Let's see what we're missing out on. 
Well, I mean, we're not really missing out on much because we we already have our sniper. We need that playmaker, and we did we ever get one in Darren McLeod? <laughs> All right, let's simulate up to, I believe it's the third round. Uh, nope, okay, we have a second round pick. Actually, we have two second round picks. For some reason, I thought we didn't have any uh, second round picks, but uh, all right, let's see. Willie Bachman. So this guy is apparently got medium elite, but I don't know how much I trust that. So I'm going to keep looking a little bit here, see what's going on. Exactly undrafted, though, so that's probably going to be low. You know what? This guy's supposed to go in the second round anyway. We'll take a chance on Willie Bachman. Let's see what he turns out to be. Uh, medium top nine, of course. So I think I'll save Platt for later. Now, uh, who else? I think maybe we'll take a chance on a defenseman. Jim Ellison. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, medium top four. Not bad. That's some trade value right there. We could definitely use that. So, actually, that might have been a better pick than, uh, than that supposed medium elite potential forward that we got with the previous pick. Because the top four defensemen tend to have more value. Okay, so that's a seventh round. So, that's probably a low top four. Or maybe, may not even be a top four. It might be a top six or maybe in seventh defenseman. So let's just go by projected once again. Yeah, let's just take Ahanen. Oh, not bad. Medium top six. Beautiful. Beautiful pick right there with the uh, the third round pick. And uh, skipping right over to the fifth round here. Let's, uh, let's go for Rafalski. Bottom six. Okay, so. I was trying my luck with the, those top nine forwards once again, but uh, didn't work out for me right there. Uh, you know what? Let's take let's take this guy. Let's see what he turns out to be. Probably low. Yeah, low elite. Not bad though. Still a lot of trade value right there. Good pick. And uh, let's just try to get this done as soon as possible here. Let's take this high top six defenseman. Uh, yeah, medium seventh. Okay. I don't know what I <laughs> I don't know what else I was expecting to be honest. And one more pick, it looks like. Let's, yeah, you know what? Let's take, uh, let's take Timmins. He might be, uh, he might still be a top four, eh, top six. Okay, fair enough. Whatever, good draft, very good draft, actually. We got the second overall pick in a trade with the Vegas Golden Knights to get Darren McLeod. He is going to be a big part of our center core for years to come. So we're looking a lot better already at forward. And uh, actually, in the last episode, Joe Thornton did not retire, so he's going to keep being uh, on our team uh, until he decides to retire, basically. And he is going to be 42 years old next year. <laughs> so I, I guess he's trying to pull a Yager. I don't know what's going on there, but he is definitely uh, getting up there in age. So I... Let's see. These guys are probably for the minors, right? Yeah. Thornton accepted, good. Uh, Press accepted, rejected. Did uh, Heat, I believe that was. Bebo accepted, Rod accepted, Fitzgerald accepted, Gregor. Okay. I'll wait on Heat until uh, the last day. I don't necessarily need him. <laughs> need Heat. So, as we go back into contracts here. There should only be two guys left, Heed and LeBanc. So as we take a look at the this year here. Uh, yes, so since he didn't sign, I'll just release him. He's going to be a pain to re-sign otherwise. And LeBanc, I'll qualify RFA you, and that'll be just about it besides the rookies. So let's get them on board. And uh, yeah, McLeod signing you right away. And uh, I believe that is, yeah, that'll be it. <laughs> that'll be the only prospect we signed this year is Darren McLeod. And we will get into free agency. There you go, McLeod. And uh, yeah, LeBanc was offered an RFA, so maybe we could trade him if need be. So let's see who is in free agency. Ooh, Ovi. Ovi's in free agency. <laughs> uh, in my dreams, yeah. I don't even think we'll be able to afford Ovi within the next couple of years anyway because we got guys like McAvoy, Falk, Shea. 
And then you got Vernarski coming up. And then you got Kolyakovo. You got Hurdle. You got Meyer, who's making 7.3 for some reason. <laughs> you got uh, McLeod, who after his rookie contract will be probably on a big contract. Ryan Spooner. So we got a lot of guys who are making a lot of money. And we don't need to necessarily pay Ovechkin. And uh, we're also waiting on, oh, uh, not to mention Frederick Mahler. <laughs> right? He's already backup goaltender. He is ready for next year. So you know what? Let's see if we can find a goaltender who would be able to be a more serviceable starter than Saros. And then uh, just so that he can, you know, we don't have to rush Frederick Mahler into his role. So maybe, not not like Frederick Anderson, but maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe Neuwirth. All skaters forward, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Seven, eight, uh, yeah, sure, Tippett can be nine, I guess, because we want to make room for forwards who might be up and coming, you know, as well, so we'll sign three forwards, uh, defenseman, one, two, three, four, five, Bergman could be six, but I want to try to upgrade Bergman, so we'll sign one defenseman, and then I want to try to upgrade Saro, so one defenseman, uh, one top six defenseman to be specific because we already have our top four kind of filled out with Vernarski in the future. And then Pouliot's playing there just for now next to McAvoy. And have I been saying Ma uh, McAvoy this whole time? I feel like I've been saying McAvoy instead of McAvoy. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, let's let's try to get maybe a second liner or so. But I think the only second liner there was Stepan, and he's a bit old for my taste at the moment. I mean, the only reason we'd be getting an older goaltender is so that we can ease Frederick Mahler into his role. And then by the time the older goaltender retires or is traded, Mahler's ready to go. But uh, it's a different story with forwards. It's 31. I, I prefer not to sign someone like Stepan to... Uh, yeah, I prefer not to sidestep on for right now. It's just a little bit too old for my taste at the moment. So let's sort by uh, potential here to see where the prospects are at. If there's any prospects, doesn't look like there's anyone worth noting. Nothing to write home about for prospects in free agency. So let's, I don't know. Let's start with the defenseman. I feel like that'll be the easiest. So maybe someone like Ian Cole. Left-handed. Uh, no, Vernarski's left-handed. I want to try to find a righty. Bolyu, lefty, lefty. David Savar's a righty, but he's a top four. If I gave him if I gave him penalty kill time, that might not be bad. He's a 30 years old, though. Brodine's a lefty. Okay, let's see. What about Petrovic? Yeah, Petrovic might not be bad because he's got that physical category and uh, slightly above average defensive category as well. So he might not be bad. He's 28, uh, 29 years old. The move right now would be to sign Petrovic. I'm probably butchering that name, but whatever. <laughs> let's give him four mil for two years. That sounds good for him. Let's go for goaltender now. Let's go for maybe, yeah, you know what? Let's go for Dubnik. I know I said he was a little old, but now that I look and see he still has his starter potential, that might not be bad for, you know, one year. So let's give him a one-year deal for, let's say, 3.8. Hopefully he'll want to come to us for that. And now three forwards. So... I don't want to sign anyone like Dubinsky or Stepan. Maybe Shane, because he's only he's 29. On a, I want someone within the age range. So maybe uh, I think Dino would be a good one. Let's sign him. Let's try to sign him, actually. I'll give him 3.4. And let's see who else. Brett Connolly. Mm, nah. No. Nope. Right, let's see, Shane. Yeah, I think we're gonna sign Shane. He's uh, he's a solid defensively, so I'll sign him two years at three point four. Yeah, hopefully he accepts that. 
And we need one more. You know what? We may as well be Donskoy. May as well get him back. Two years at... Yeah, we'll just go 3.4 like the rest of them. Now, uh, let's see how much that takes us to in the cap space, actually. That should only take us to about 25 or so mil. So we should need to definitely uh, sign someone to fill up all that cap space. So, see what happens. Shayan, Petrovic, Dubnik, Deno, Donskoy. I believe that is it. Yes, that is it. So, we got all of them. So that's good to know. Let's see uh, see what our salary cap situation is looking like here. 23.2 mil, so definitely want to sign someone to take care of that salary cap. Maybe to like a 10 mil, maybe 12 mil contract just to you know, give us some breathing room if we want to make some trades. So that we're not below the cap floor if we have to make a trade or if we're not you know, at the ceiling. So, uh, yeah, I think that otherwise fills it out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I believe that is 9 right there. 10, 11, 12 is Tippett. And if we look in the system, yeah, we got LeBanc in the system still if we want to play him. So, you know what? Actually, I'll sign, I'll sign LeBanc. I will sign LeBanc. He could, he could be useful if Tippett doesn't pan out. So, yeah, we'll sign LeBanc. And then defenseman, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, technically, with Bergman. If we look in the system, not too much going on there. So we got everyone up here already. And then goaltenders, we've got Dubnik, Saros, and Mahler. So I think we're good to go, besides that uh, that one contract guy. So I will do that right now really quick. Not going to make you guys sit through that. All right, so I decided to sign Miko Koivu once again uh, to a $12 million deal one year. Yeah, he's more or less just going to be signed for depth, I guess, <laughs> if you want to call it that. He'll, I guess he'll more just more or less just be a uh, another veteran voice in the locker room. <laughs> Other than that, so uh, yeah, we should be able to get him no problem. Perfect. And uh, yeah, there's Kevin LeBanc as well. So I believe we are all set. So let's go into next season. All right, so we are in the next season, so let's take a look at the growth of all of our guys here. So, uh, Kola Akavo did not grow at all, 87 still, so <laughs> hopefully he can uh, he can get it going a little bit there. Ho I was kind of hoping he could uh, break 90 overall, but uh, not looking too promising after that, but he's only 20 years old, so I don't know why I'm even talking about that. Uh, Justin Falk. You know what, let's start by uh, position here. Let's go goaltenders first. Uh, Dominic 82. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so he's already down to a fringe starter as well. So he should be good enough, long, long enough to, uh, uh, to, to fill in for Frederick Mahler. And Frederick Mahler, I mean, he's not far off. He's 81 already, so... That is good. Uh, McAvoy and Falk. Shea, Vernarski's an 81. So, I mean, his offensive awareness is good. 87. That that was an 83 at the start of the last season. So, he's definitely gotten better offensively. We know that. So, uh, we, we know he's grown for sure. And then Puglia, Petrovic, and Bergman. Bergman's probably going to be sitting. And uh, Koivu. You know what? You can you can help out the young guns. <laughs> Koivu can help out the young guns down there. So uh, Carlson, LeBanc, Rubsov is a 79. He's a third-line checker now. That's good. Saw some good growth out of him. Thorne's still a 79. He has not dropped whatsoever from last season. Dano, Donskoy, Shayan, Spooner, McLeod, our second overall pick from this past year. Hopefully stud center of the future. And then Meyer, Hurdle, and Kole Akvo. So I'm going to do the lines real quick, and I'll get b right back to you guys. All right, so I think I've got the lines here. Meyer, Hurdle, Kole Akvo, Donskoy, Spooner, Shan, Rubsov, McLeod, Thornton. So Jumbo's going to be playing with Darren McLeod. Same thing as what he did with Kole Akvo, except he's going to be on the right wing this year because uh, Rubsov is a left winger and McLeod's a center. I want McLeod to get better at faceoffs. If faceoffs even get better in this game, I don't even know. Uh, LeBanc and then Deneau and Carlson. 
And then defense, Puglia and McAvoy, Shea and Falk, Vernarski and Petrovic, and Bergman is sitting. Special teams, power play, Spooner, Hurdle, Kolyakovo, McAvoy, and Puglia. Second line is Meyer, McLeod, and Thornton, and then Falk and Vernarski. And then there's the four-man, and penalty kill is Deno and Rubsov, Shea and McAvoy, Sheehan and Donskoy, then Petrovic and Falk. There's three men, and then four-on-four four is looking like this. And then three-on-three. Three. Extra attackers are Kolayakovo and McLeod. Shootout is Kolayakovo, Hurdle, Meyer, Falk, and McLeod. And then goaltenders Dubnik and Mahler. Look much different than last year. And then uh, Bergman is, of course, Scratch. So those will be the Lions for this year. So uh, Owen Tippett still did not make the team, it appears, unless... Uh, Unless he is down there and I didn't just realize it. So, yeah. No, Tippett has not grown. So, we may want to consider trading him because he has appeared to be uh, static for the past uh, couple of years. So, again, may may want to consider trading him. Might be a Jeremy Waugh situation going on right there. So, this episode, I'm sure, has gone on long enough. I'm going to end it there. So, let me know what you guys think and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>